Uh, oh, Andrea Tussman. Hello, Kirk Buckner. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. Uh, I guess we're looking back only two and a half years ago, but do you want to start off with a comment from one of your fans? Sure, let's start off with a comment. Okay, it's actually more directed to me. Okay. But but uh, I, I know he sort of comes by way of you. A gentleman named Brad Nelson. And this is really relevant to every show I do. Inquiring minds want to know, Kirk, is your pad- podcasting rig steam-powered? If not, then what is that weird squeak in every one of the How to Hell episodes? Well, Brad, <laughs> they are quarter-sized frogs called whistling frogs here in Barbados. I'm not making that up. <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah, that's what they are. I can't stop them unless I sort of go out of my house, which I'm not going to do because I'm too lazy. So they are tiny frogs. Yeah, they're tiny frogs. Well, I told you that before, but I didn't think I really told you the size of these frogs. No, I just assumed they were like the frogs we get in Canada that chirp off in the background, you know, in the summer. No, no, these are not not even the size of a quarter. Interesting. Yes, uh, it, it, there. It's I. I don't even see them at night. And then when I do see these big giant frogs, they're actually these big toads. They're not <laughs> making any noise. My dog tries to lick them. <laughs> and I think this is sort of a nice, calm little way to get into the song that you picked, which is the deepest, darkest conversation we will ever have. I hope. Because you're taking us to 2018, March, oh no, March, May 19th, 2018. This is America, Childish Gambino. Andrea, why did we pick this? I I know why, but tell everyone. Well, we were, um, it was right, yeah, it it was um, right around when there was the riots in the Capitol in the States. And it just seemed to me, A, I wanted to do something more recent, but Mm -hmm. it just, the just so much unrest and stuff that's going on in America that as well, you have said many times, we are both around middle age ish Canadians who have no idea about what is really going on in America, yet mm-hmm. we we armchair analyze it weekly. So mm-hmm. I figured that let's uh, try for something harder. Oh, Jesus. I mean like this is sort of like going from like uh, two plus two to calculus. I, I, <laughs> I, I <laughs> it really is. So tell me first, what what was your impression of the song before I brought this up? Like, yeah, okay. for me personally, I I heard the song when it came out. I've heard it since. I knew there was a whole bunch of controversy around the video. I watched it and was absolutely shocked and flabbergasted. Mm-hmm. And never really looked much deeper into it, aside from what you heard on the talk shows and, and stuff. But um, so I knew it was, you know, a discuss discussion about race in America and about, you know, placating the rich to obscure and obfuscate the what was really going on. But that was kind of it. Um, but there's just so much. But what was your thoughts of it before? So, like, uh, okay, so, so I guess, like, in 2018, looking back at that, uh, really mm-hmm. twofold. Uh, first thing is, holy crap, uh, this guy's a genius. And it's, and when we're talking about Charles Gambino, uh, Don, Donald Glover, I think. Who is not the son of Danny Glover, which I discovered this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting too old for this shit. <laughs> right. Yes. I think for the, I'm not alone here and God, this makes me sound so ignorant, but I think a lot of people when they know, when they knew of Donald Glover for years anyway, it was just the fun, good looking guy from community. Uh-huh. And that's all I knew him for. 
Uh, yeah, and, so, and I think that's how he was a, a, a lot writer of people. And occasionally yeah. on Thirty Rock, mm-hmm. he was just a, a yeah a comedian. Well, I didn't even know that un- un- until uh, this week. Like uh, like his origin story. I mean, I knew to me, yeah. and again and again, it's not something that I would really look up before that. Oh, okay, here's this great guy on a community a show I love. Oh shit, he can rap too. Oh shit, he's good. Holy shit, listen to what this guy says. Though, did you listen to any of his early stuff? I it did. It wasn't very good. Well, <laughs> I, I guess also technology and things like that. Like, we're, we're going back a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah. But, anyways, sorry, continue. No, I, and, well, what I would say, yeah, I, I know him from Community. I'd seen him on 30 Rock. Like, just, I was like, oh, that's the kid from Community when I was watching some rerun of 30 Rock. And then... It's like, oh, he's a writer on 30 Rock before he went to community. And, yeah, that was it. He'd seen him on a few things here and there, but uh, didn't really think anything else of it. Yeah, to the point also, and also recently I've been watching his show Atlanta. I don't know if you've seen that. I haven't, so I'm intrigued now that I've uh, been looking into it because they they keep bringing it up in interviews, and apparently it's it's very good. It is very good. And he's one of those guys where I think almost anything he touches is gold. Like, like that's really how I feel. I almost think of him as one of the top ten performers right he, now. He was named as one of the most influential um, people in the the arts industry or something. I can't remember exactly what it was, but okay. like for for a youngish guy, he's in his mid thirties. Um, and he literally, yeah, it seems like he's just, he can do no wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, Until he will. Speaking of can do no wrong, <laughs> did you look at some of his early comedy stuff? No, I haven't. Most specifically, the eight minute comedy segment, Bro Rape. Bro Rape? Yes. So there's, there's some outlash about this and it's basically, he is, uh, miming raping another dude uh, at the beginning of this comedy segment. And at first I was just kind of shocked and appalled. And then I was like, oh, wait. So this is from probably the early 2000s. Um, and it's set up as like an investigative report about role rape. And um, it's... But then they're they're literally making a comment on the excuses that people make about rape. So it's, it's offensive, but I was, after actually watching it, I was like, ah, uh, you know what? I kind of get what you did there. Like, mm. I don't like it, but there's a, there's definitely, definitely some controversy about that. So one of those things where if you take it literal, you're going to be offense offended. Well, people will be offended by anything. Uh, that's very true. That, but that, anyways, that is very true. I'm sure I've already offended some people here just by saying how frogs sure were the size of a saying quarter. Saying bro rape without saying oh trigger warning uh, probably offended people. I don't say I don't use trigger warning. No, please don't. If you're triggered, that's your own problem. Yeah, that's a that's a YP a you, a you problem. Uh-huh. I like that. But yeah, it's so yeah, right. so yeah. But to your to your question though, uh, so like that was pretty much my concept of that then. Uh, and then two songs to me came up from my youth when I was thinking about that. Uh, not so much when I listened to it, but when I heard the video, because when you're listening to the song itself, and I, I know we're going to touch more on that, you're not really getting the full artistic vision of Childish Gambino. I, I, well, I, I really think that with this song, the video is more important than the song. I agree. Yeah, the, I, I totally and they. Agree. I think there's a reason they released them at the exact like at the same time mm-hmm. um, because when I just heard the song, I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. It's like got this. I'm thinking South African feel to the kind of gospel music, and mm-hmm. then it switches in a dramatic manner to some really yeah. dark, heavy trap. And I was like, okay, well, there's obviously like. You know, you can kind of make out, you can't really make out a lot of what he's saying. Um, you know, there's part, this is America, look at you tripping up, um, look what you're slipping. I, I can't even really, I read them, but, um, and then it, 
the, go- the gospel part, singing "Get Your Money, Black Man." Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, there's definitely there's definitely he's saying something with the lyrics, but but it's the video. It's 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 a hundred percent the video that is the artistic statement of this song. Have you ever heard a song? And I was trying to think about this where you've ever sort of, where there's been a song, or at least a, any hit song anyway, where it would sort of go in one direction. And you were talking about sort of the South African uh, gospel vibe uh, to it, and then it just and changes to something South else. And I don't know South African specifically. That's just kind of what popped in my head, but African, let's just say. Yeah. But yeah, it's that, that uh, and, you know, you've got the kids dancing, and you've got Donald Glover dancing, very, you know, big smile on his face. And it it starts out just so happy and upbeat. Which is his point, obviously, because that's exactly where he wanted to go with that. And I, I think, too, doing the whole upbeat and then the direct violence right after, because I think the first scene of that is he's shooting he, a guy he, in the back of the head. Yeah, he's he's dancing along and then he literally stops. He does the jump, the... Um, Jim Crow pose from mm-hmm. that old cartoon and and then shoots the guy in the back of the head who was previously playing guitar with him. Mm-hmm. So, and then, um, and he's, then it's just an instant, he goes from this happy, smiling, dancing dude to this, it's suddenly dark expression and it switches to this dark trap music and that's where he starts with it. This is America. And it's, it's shocking. I um, did you watch any of the reaction videos to it? No, a ton of people because did um, did reaction videos where they watched it filming themselves for the first time. And there was this one with these two guys. I think it was a guy and his dad, um, and they were Southern American of some sort. And they're like, "Oh yeah, all right, this is good, you know, and kind of happy and upbeat." And then you just see them go, "Whoa!" when he shoots the guy the first time, and then later when he goes back to the happy dancing and then he mows down the gospel choir. And it's, it's just, it's incredible, really. Um, the, the transposition and the changing of the feel of it over and over. Um, and you just have enough time to get back into the, uh, into the happy sound of this gospel choir. And then it flips again. And, um, yeah, it, it's a huge statement. Well, you you look at the video. They're mm-hmm. they're happy and dancing, but really the scene is going on in the background. There's just chaos through different things. There's there's you know violence, and there's kids up on a scaffolding filming it, and there's with their cameras, you know, with their phones. There's uh, just while they're performing and dancing in front of the camera. It, it's just covering the chaos in the background, which I think is a huge point of the sh- of the, the video. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I, I think also too to come up with something where you're looking at gun violence, and I mean, I grew up in the '80s, right? So, do you ever watch the A Team? And I know I'm I'm taking this somewhere else, but yep. Okay, so I always remember as a little kid, like my God, like for every. Their bullet to death ratio is pretty low. <laughs> they never okay. seem to kill anybody. Yes. But you get desensitized to what a bullet can actually do. And Glover right here, man, he – and then the reason I sort of bring up A-Team and all this other stuff, just like growing up as a kid, you know, you see all this stuff. I I can't remember the last time that I've ever watched anything with gun violence – and went, holy shit. And he did it. And which is the whole point. Well, a big point of what he wanted to accomplish. And he did. I, I hadn't thought of it that way, but I totally agree with you. It, it is maybe a little bit resensitizing people. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they did an interesting thing with the guns. Each time he shot someone, he then, a child came with a red cloth and he, gently handed over the gun, which they took away with reverence almost while like in the first case, they just drag the body off unceremoniously. Mm -hmm. And then the same after he guns down the choir, he hands off the gun gently 
and you just kind of ignore the dead bodies of the choir laying there. So it's it's much more uh, we they it, there's a reverence for the weapon over the person, which kind yeah. of brings up maybe gun control laws. And I guess that's for you and I as Canadians. Like I, I can't speak for all. Obviously, I'm not going to speak for all Canadians. I can only speak for myself. I can't remember. I probably never saw a gun until I was a teenager, and that's only because a cop came to high school just to say, "Hi, hey, I'm a cop." Any questions oh, or something stupid? Yeah, I never absolutely saw not. Yeah. I um I, I saw hunting rifles. My my stepdad was a hunter, so but they were always locked up and taken care of very carefully. Um, but no, there was never, I, I don't know of anyone in my life that ever had a handgun aside from if you were in the service in some capacity, mm-hmm. we played with pellet guns and BB guns as kids and that sort of thing. But, uh, no, carry, like, carrying a gun with you in your everyday life is just such a strange concept. For, for you and I, it is, but for a lot of Americans, hence this is America, it's not for a lot of people in urban life in America it's not for a lot of people not necessarily in urban life in America it's not it's not at all I have you know I talk to people in Facebook groups and they're the even people that are very left-wing liberal have just uh, it's like oh yeah no you you everybody carries it's just what we do it's like what like I I couldn't imagine just walking down the street thinking that everybody around me has a gun on them I saw, I was watching baseball a few years ago, a Texas Rangers game, go figure. And this guy's going out for a, for a fly ball, catches it, and then he's got a gun on him. Like, as he's sort of like opening his jacket, just sort of opens up, and there's a gun. And, and, there's a, and, and the commentator is like, oh, well, this is Texas. <laughs> and then uh, and now, and now Burroughs is taking the plate. It's like, like what the? Really? <laughs> We're done here? <laughs> yeah. It's it's a completely different foreign concept to Canadians. So it if there's is. people out there listening to us that aren't Canadian, um, I'm sorry because we, we don't get just it. Don't understand carrying guns as, as as part of a regular lifestyle choice. Yeah, exactly. But um, what were we talking about? Oh, just the gun violence. Yeah, the, that, that's what yeah, I took more from that laws. than the racism. I mean, it's there, obviously, but uh, that that's something that stuck out to me more. And so uh, you asked me sort of like the, what the other thing sort of got when I first listened to it. And then when I first saw the video, I had a sort of like, and then a throwback to songs from my teen years or late teen years, rather, uh, you know, 911 is a joke and uh, fuck the police uh, by uh-huh. NWA which were two, you know, very gritty anti-cop songs. This wasn't necessarily anti-cop. Actually, I don't think this was anti-cop at all. At least if it was, I didn't pick up on it. But it's, it, it still was painting the the picture of urban life from that, but did that in a much more grittier way. It certainly is. Sonically, and- anyway. Dramatic and yeah, sonically gritty, absolutely. Because when it, it's a really harsh dichotomy between the two sounds of the song, I, I've never. I, I was, I'd asked you this earlier, but I can't think of any song that's ever done this more successfully, going from just one sound to another, what, regardless of what the topic is. I can't think of one. It's really interesting how he does it because he's he uses basically gunshots each time to, to swap it back and forth. So it, it starts or silence. So it starts with happy, joyful gospel and then bam, shoot someone and then cuts into the trap. And then there's a, a bit of a transition and a kind of a theme change. And then it's back to the happy, joyful and then mows down a choir and then back to the trap. And then there's kind of a, another slight pause and back to the, the gospel. 
And then he takes a 17-second pause, which is well, while he's lighting a joint. Um, and apparently, and now I'm blanking on which shooting with 17 people that they figure that that symbolizes, but mm. they, they kind of look at all these different shootings. The, the choir member, it was eight choir members that were gunned down in the basement of a church. Um, there was, and then there was 17, it was a school shooting with 17 people. And I'm completely forgetting right now, but still, and then he continues on with Kathy dancing on top of the car. And then there's all these old, all the cars are like nineties vehicles. Um, and they all have their driver's side doors open, which something was saying that it's talking about, you know, the, the amount of, of black drivers that are forced to get out of their cars when they're stopped. It's not a matter of just pulling them over and getting their, their license and registration. They're actually physically removed from their vehicles, um, even if they've done no wrong, which is an interesting observation. Um, and then the end where he's running and there's very powerful. It's, it's interesting. So there's a few different, there's, I've, I've seen comparisons to the he's running from the KKK running. It's a comparison. I found it very, very similar to get out. I did too. I was thinking more running from the police. With, it's the white of the eyes Yeah. when he's in the darkness and you really just see his eyes and his teeth shining. Um, that kind of made that comparison for me, mm-hmm. but the lyrics at that point where they're saying, um, you're a big, something along the lines of you're a big dog, um, and you're chained up in the yard and that's no place for the big dog or something like that. And I was like, that's interesting too, because I'm pretty sure that's referencing slavery. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe comparing slavery with essentially, golden shackles of stardom in terms of, you know, there were, were comments about this was shortly after Kanye was um, supporting Trump and, you know, maybe he's making comments about how, the, you know, you're, you're a big dog, but you're chained up as in like, sure, you're rich and famous, but you're basically on a chain um, that's, you're kept there by your, your riches. So I, I looked at that in in a similar way, but I, I thought maybe what he was also saying too is no matter how successful I am, and maybe that's sort of like why he was sort of stripped down and just very in, uh, you know, not wearing a shirt, just in, in very nondescript pants. No matter what I no no matter how successful I am, there's a lot of you who will just see me as just a black guy. That is also a very astute observation. Though the pants apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they've compared them to, um, to like the colonial armies and old oh. school, um, military pants oh, okay. from the South because of the buttons. I just thought they were cool pants, to be honest. Like, oh, <laughs> those are good pants. But, uh, yeah. But again, everything about this, every single analysis and every single thing that I saw and read is all conjecture because he refuses to say anything about it. Interviewers try over and over to get him to make some comment about this video. And he's just literally kind of sits back and smiles a bit and says, I don't think that that would be true to the nature of the song and, or of whatever. And you, you just, you need to form your own opinions. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I kind of prefer that though, in some way, than Kanye, than the whole Kanye. I I'm a genius. Really do. It's like okay, you're going to make one of the most controversial songs mm-hmm. in a decade, and and then just just leave it. Just let the people decide. I think that's it's both brilliant and incredibly egotistical. That's actually another thing I sort of learned, was learning more about uh, about uh, Mr. Glover here. He, a little bit, his whole, a little bit, a little. He's got a bit of a Jesus complex. Yeah, I didn't want to say that, but I was going to say like more, <laughs> yeah. a little more artsy than I sort of enjoy no, for like, my personal liking. But having said that, 
I have not seen him in anything that I've disliked except for when he was on Girls. And I, and I kept trying to give that show a chance. Oh, I tried a few times and I just couldn't get past her just annoyance. Not even the controversy about her. I don't, I, I'm, that's aside from anything. It's just, I just found the show really, really annoying. Well, so I didn't actually know he was on it. Oh, yeah. but I did see that Lena Dunham had made good comments about him being like that he was just in a league of his own and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I figured what? there was some connection. Oh, fuck Lena Dunham. <laughs> right. You're the one who brought up girls. I did because, you know what, that was when I thought, okay, if it's on HBO and I was sort of like falling into that HBO trap, well, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a shot. And so, like, yeah, apparently she, he was on that show playing like a two episode arc as her girlfriend. Because the show was criticized because, well, okay, they're in New York City. How come there's no black people or no people of color? And so, uh, mm. you know, and uh, so she was, ca- he, uh, she cast him as her boyfriend and then she dumped him because he, she found out he was a Republican. I think that's when I checked out. Mm. It's like, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, so, and I, I felt, uh, it felt it almost like very similar to what uh, sort of happened recently with uh, you, Chelsea Handler and 50 Cent. Oh, I don't know. I didn't see that. Well, you know, apparently those two used to date. I didn't know that until uh, until recently. And Fifty Cent before the election said, "Yeah, I'm, I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember the exact quote." But he said he might be voting Trump because he didn't want to have pay more taxes because he, he knew Biden was going to be up. Pay, it'll be more taxes under Biden. And so Chelsea Handler said, "I had I went on Jimmy Fallon or one of those shows." I had to rem- I had to like message him and remind him that he's black. Like, okay, so yeah, because you know, yeah, you're exactly because if Cause you, your blonde hair, blue eyed, uh, Aryan person should be really commenting on that. Well, and, and well, or really anything. I mean, like that's like the whole thing of identity politics, which I absolutely despise. Think what you want. And that's that. I I will not paint you into a corner because of your race or gender. Actually, actually, Uh uh, you you want to hear about about immigration? Ask my Asian immigrant wife about that. It's not going to be the answer you think. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But back yeah, back to that. Yes, I um he he made a few comments and stuff that I saw uh, that basically was saying that he really you know, thinks he is the best thing out there. And it's in terms of like creativity or whatever, but like, is there anybody better than you? Well, I haven't seen them yet type answers to questions. And I mean, I don't entirely disagree with him. I think Mm -hmm. he has obviously got something going on for him, but um, humility is not that. Does he say it with a nudge and a wink or... I don't think so. Like, there's no tongue, tongue-in-cheek type. I, I didn't get that impression. Mm-hmm. I get that he genuinely, but you know what? I mean, if you're if you're delivering on it, then there's nothing wrong with that, I guess. Um, I just think that it would be nice if people had a bit of humility. Yeah, but it's not a necessary trait if you're not an asshole, I guess. But but again, we mentioned the whole mentioned Kanye, and then for the third time, compared to Kanye, he's pretty down to earth. <laughs> well, that's just it. He's not. He doesn't showboat. But that, and that's kind of why I said he's got a Jesus complex, mm-hmm. as opposed to saying he well is like Kanye. I think he's made comments about he's better than Kanye, which is kind of funny because mm-hmm. he probably is. But. Um, I'd but say overall more respected. I think he's also at this made point. comments that he's better than Drake, which is also funny because I don't really like Drake. But I'm being a Canadian. Is that sacrilegious? Am, am I treasonous for saying I don't like no. Drake as a Canadian? I, I think it's I think it's more sacrilegious if you say you don't like the tragically hip. Now, right now, a bunch well, of Americans are trying to think who, who the hell is the tragically hip? Who? No, no. Don't you even bring that up. The tragically hip are gods. Yeah, to Canadians. Shush. What do you mean, shush? <laughs> okay, fine. Um, that's also like saying, if you do, okay, do you know how to find a Canadian in any bar in the world? 
Uh, um, You'll have to excuse me, I'm not at my best. <laughs> and then you just wait. <laughs> and they will continue singing. That's true. But anyways, that's, that's also not the tragically hip. No. That's just my my joke. Um, I've been anyways, down for so, the drink yeah. of it. Sorry. <laughs> right? Yep. You, have to, you just have to continue it. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so I was like, I'm, I'm thinking Jesus complex because he just knows he's great and he's kind of subtle about it, but also just, I, I am your, your savior. And, you but, know, and, and I think the other thing too, that he's created Andrea is especially with that whole video and everything that's going on in the U S and how, I don't see a lot of things changing anytime soon, especially in relation to gun violence and just gun ownership. Although the NRA went bankrupt a few weeks ago. Yeah, that's so interesting. I don't think that's going to change much, but I really don't. But we'll see. I wonder how th- – this is one of those songs that I think will be interpreted differently a few years because in a few years from now. And I was looking at a lot of the comments on the – the official YouTube page for this. And most people were sort of keying in on the whole racism part. I mean, again, I, I think it's more, more about guns than race. I mean, they're, they're both there obviously, but there's going to be a lot I of really have a, I, I feel it's more about race than guns in the sense of, well, he'll never tell us. No, he won't. Um, I, I just see it's more gun violence against, you know, every time he shoots someone, then he starts with "This is America again." Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I think it's, I think it's a commentary on a lot of things. Right. But it would be interesting to see in ten years from now what people think of it. Oh, so we'll do this again in ten years. Sure, let's do that. The other interesting thing too: uh, this debuted at number one. Not very many songs will do that. And he was also on Saturday Night Live that day. So, I mean, like, May 19th, 2018 was happy, happy Donald Glover Day. It might as well have been. Oh, yeah. And that, I think, was all very well orchestrated because Mm -hmm. they debuted the video and the song basically on Saturday Night Live. Um, So, yeah, it was was well... Planned. And why not? But I don't know. It, it's interesting because I don't know if they would have known that it would have been instantly number one or because it could have very easily gone the other way and people could have taken huge offense to it. But I think it's so well crafted. Um, and I mean, He's he's obviously a golden child and can do no wrong. So I think that they probably took some risks with it. Yeah. With a highly anticipated positive payoff. I, I think you bring up an interesting point because uh, he is sort of that gold child right now, and we see that a lot in pop culture. Uh, whether you're acting, a musician, what, whatever it might be, where you're going to get a. And I'm not saying that he, he's getting a pass because that's not what I'm trying to say at all. But where no matter what you do, you can't do anything wrong until they decide that, okay, you know what, we're tired of you. And I wonder, oh, yeah. and, and I hope that doesn't happen with, with, uh, with Donald unless he does do something wrong, unless he starts to, let's just say, to make poor artistic choices. He has made comments about... Uh, you know, we're talking about comedy, about how nothing should be off limits with comedy. I agree. You you should make fun of everything. And I guess it kind of falls back to my comments about trigger warnings. Like, if something... I'm not going to be purposely offensive to you at all. I will try to manage what I say. Right. But I'm not going to, every time I say something or do something that you might think is slightly off color or... Um, you know, it, it might have something to do to something traumatic that happened to you 
20 years ago. I'm not going to, to preface it by saying, oh, someone in the world might be offended by this, like, or upset by it, or it might bring up that past trauma. Like, that's not... So he made, he's made comments multiple times about literally, like, I, I'm not... And I think it might also have to do with the bro rape and some other of his older comedy sketches. Um, but it's like, everything should be on the table with comedy. And I kind of agree with that as long as you're always punching up. Yeah, but now, now we have the, the – I know we're now going somewhere else. The def- Here's my problem a bit with that when you, when you say punching up. Sometimes – and I'm not saying you're saying that, but sometimes the people who say that have no sense of humor at all. And when you're talking about punching up, that almost means – Pretty much everything, everything's all, all fair game as long as you're taking a shot at a white male. And I know I'm a white guy here saying this, but... You know what? That's a fair assessment, though, because it, it, it's not a popular thing to say. That, but, but, you know, white dudes deserve some respect, too, sometimes. Not often, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's... it's it's an easy trope to to make fun of, but um, I, I yeah I, I I agree with that, and also there's I I in the in the comedy I've watched like stand up comedy, which is a reasonable amount. Mm-hmm. Um, the the funniest ones are the ones that are literally making fun of rich white people often. There's also really funny stuff that's just bizarre, weird, fucked up humor. Um, And I'm a big proponent of bizarre, weird, fucked up humor. And other people sometimes find that offensive. So, you know, when you have to defend your humor, as long as it's not as long as it's not actually attacking or insulting someone, you know, there, there's a reason why people love having, um, uh, roasts because they're fucking funny mm-hmm. when you can with intelligence make fun of people. It's funny, but you have to have some intelligence to be able to do that. And unfortunately, a lot of times when people are offended by, comedy sometimes it's not funny you know what but then it's not really comedy it's just some asshole but a lot of times it's it's people that don't have the intelligence to understand the joke behind it they just see someone being offensive well, this could go into a whole other thing on cancel culture which i oh, kind that's of a dis- whole other thing yeah i kind we of despise get but back to yeah. Childish Gambino yeah. and, and change this thread of conversation. Yeah, uh, well, I, I guess if, I, I went back and re-listened to a lot of his material because they're not all meant to sort to meant to make you think. He can pretty much do whatever he wants at this point, and it's. I hate using the word artist, but he's a mar- he's an artist. There's there's no. Mm-hmm. There's no better description I can have for him. I hope, and this is, I think, the, and I guess this is really the first time we've ever talked about anyone. I know we just talked about Katy Perry, but we've never really talked about anyone at their peak. That's true. It's, it's the because first we time. We haven't really talked about anyone modern. Yeah. So Katy Perry did sing at the presidential inauguration last week. So okay. I didn't watch that shit. I just I just watched the actual swearing them in, and I didn't watch the rest of it. But um, I did see Gaga singing the anthem, and I mm. thought she did a really good job. Mm. Mm. I, I, I watched all the shows leading up to it. I saw the I saw the finale. I, I, you know, you know, I, I'm 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 I'm, do, right. I'm done with this season. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, uh, no, we're on to the new season now. Yeah, we, we well we are, and there's nothing that interests me right now, and maybe that's not a bad thing, or I'm choosing not to be interested. Oh, you know what? Just just quiet stability is nice. 
uh, or pe- put it, or putting people back to sleep, which is kind of twofold. But I'll I'll explain that another day. <laughs> Today, All right. Today's not the day for that. I actually I think we handled this one really well. I'll I want to finish with this thought. I hope, and I truly hope this, that in ten years from now we can have the same conversation and use the word artist when I talk about. Donald I hope Robert. so too. I really hope he continues to put out interesting material and doesn't um, collapse in a fiery ball of falling star like many people do. I hope not. And I, and I think what also might help, he's not, and again, let's bring up Kanye. He's not a Kanye level star either. When you're that level of a star, people want to knock you down. I also think the fact that the, he uses, I mean, he's used Childish Gambino, which apparently was from some random name. I read generation. that. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Did, oh, did but you see? Used, oh, sorry, finish. So he, he released this song, and I mean, he's been using that that pseudonym forever, but he released the song under that label and not his own label, which he uses mostly for acting, and I think it kind of protected him a little bit. Um, because, I mean, everybody knows it's Donald Glover. You can tell it from the, from the video, mm-hmm. but if you ever are looking at it, it's all Childish Gambino, Childish Gambino. So um, I, I think that might have, it, it shows a little bit that he's somewhat humble or at least not, you know, he, he, he's separating that stardom and fame from himself, even though he still is talking about it in interviews. He's not pretending that it's not him, mm-hmm. um, but he's just kind of low key. He, he's not in the spotlight. He's not doing crazy stuff. He's just kind of being himself, which is refreshing. You notice how, how when the, the end of community or his end of his uh, storyline in community, he leaves on, on Pierce Hawthorne's yacht named the childish tycoon. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of neat. Apparently those yeah. two didn't get along too good because big shock. Chevy Chase said something racist talking about comedy. That's uh Maybe a little outdated, but yeah. Well, that's the thing with comedy too, is that, you know what, what was funny 20 years ago is not funny now because it really, it's, it's all about the timing. It's all about timing, whether it's the timing of your joke or the timing of when you're saying it chronologically, like, Mm -hmm. Our, our expectations change and our, our perceptions change and you, you can't look at 30-year-old comedy necessarily in a modern light. It does not hold up well, often. Sometimes it does. Who's on first is still a funny bit. I never oh, thought that was funny. I ne- no, it's not funny. It was never funny in the first place. No, it was never. But, so it holds um, up just as well, Andrea. But it's never it's never offensive. Um, but there's a lot of '80s humor that it, you cringe listening to now. Ooh, Eddie Murphy's Delirious. Yeah. Whole and I think that that's on Netflix now. I I can't rewatch it because I know what's in it because I I watched that so many times when I was young. And it's like I was having this conversation with somebody not that long ago. It's like I honestly think. Eddie Murphy for a while there, he forgot how to be funny. So he went, he was doing all these, he had a couple flops. He was doing a bunch of kid friendly films. And did you see him on Saturday night live? Not the last time he was on when he was hosting, he was fantastic and he hit it out of the park, but it was the 40th anniversary and he just came out and just waved to people. It's like, he's lost. He doesn't know what to do anymore. He's afraid to try to tell jokes. No, I I didn't see that. Uh, And I, I could, I could be wrong there, but yeah, Eddie Murphy, Delirious, and Eddie Murphy Raw, which were two, at that time, iconic bits of comedy, age about as bad as Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> they do! Didn't see you going there, but you're right. Yeah. But, no, and that that's that's a prime example. There There is just a, a lot of, comedy doesn't age well because it's topical. And 
you're in general, people are making jokes about things that are going on right now and how we're reacting to them. And so I have a hard time judging people on, on their comedy Mm -hmm. from the past. I, I just can't, I'm not going to look up. I'm going to judge you on your current actions and maybe a little bit gauge the past, but it's not going to be the primary source of what I think about you. Mm -hmm. So well, we I think that yeah, we have to we have to put on that of, lens of, of what it was then before we. Well, and I think of some of Donald Glover's comedy from twenty years ago now maybe was funny then, maybe not so funny now. But I'm not. I'm going to look at what you've done since then and go. Okay, you know what? You actually seem to be a stand-up human being. Oh, of course, yeah, and then I think that's another great lesson. Just period. Let's. Just see who you are now, not what you did when you were 20. That's why I never sh took a shit on Justin Bieber for being an asshole when he was a little, just a little bit younger. Oh, look at all the things he was doing. Yeah, you think if I had a bunch of money and I was that good looking at 19, 20, I wouldn't be a complete jackass too? I'd be worse. Oh, Bieber's the Britney Spears 20 years, 10 years later. They're, you know, that yeah. He, he did some stupid shit, but he was a kid with a ton of fame and a ton of money. Mm -hmm. We would all have done way more stupid shit than we did. And, and Not I did everyone. I did of stupid shit. Not so, everyone. We might get to somebody on this show who – three people who never did anything. Hanson. Oh. Please number tell one? me we're not doing um bop next week. No, we're not. Do you want to know what we're doing next week? I do. What are we doing next week, we, Kirk? Because you gave us such a, a heavy topic, and I think we did very well, considering our I'm levels. Impressed. Considering our I'm levels of that privilege, two white, mostly middle-aged people mm -hmm. did this well with this topic. Yes, I, I, th I think we so did very virtual well. high fives, Kirk. Woohoo! This is what we've got. We are taking a way back playback machine, going back to the seventies, and a hunkin' piece of shit called Convoy. Convoy. C.W. McCall. Convoy. Oh. We gotta take this convoy all across the USA. <laughs> I don't know this song at all. Oh my god, I'm I'm gonna learn something new. Well, do you remember? Th well, you wouldn't remember. There was a CB craze, Citizens Band Radio, in the 1970s. Okay. And this was part of it. Oh, all right. And this song was so bad, it inspired a movie even worse. Am I going to have to watch a really bad video this week? I don't, well... Am I going to be able to find it? Oh, yeah, you, you'll be able to find... Well, you'll be able to... Well, there's no video to it. It's just like... Why? No, the, the movie. You said it. Sorry. Well, the video, I, I, don't, I, movie. I, I don't think you have to watch the movie. It's just... <laughs> it's, it stars somebody who you do know, Chris Christopherson. Really? Yeah, I have a feeling, and I could be wrong, just like I was, although I don't think I'm wrong. I, 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 I knew you'd sort of like feel, have a sort of like, uh, have good vibrations for Marky Mark, but I mean, just with those, those abs, but I could sort of see you with the, with the, you know, in his mid, in his early forties, Chris Christopherson, you know, the, 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 the rough beard and all that. Oh, Andrew, he he was a hot dude. I knew it. Uh, you know what? You, you don't need to go on match.com. Kirk.com, I'll hook I like you up. The, I like the ruggedly handsome type. I'm, I, I'm good with that. I kind of thought you might. I don't know why I thought that, because not once have you <laughs> and I ever talked about your male preferences. <laughs> I, I, I was going to make a joke about you're presuming they're male, but I, I, I think I've been pretty obvious about that. I, well, I've also seen who's come, come out of your, out of your place. <laughs> Shush, living next quiet. To you. Shush. <laughs> If it's any consolation, the person who, repl who uh, you replaced, there was many more men came out of that guy's place. <laughs> yes. Yes, there were many more men visiting my apartment before I moved in. Yes. When there was a, a, a man living there. Yes. Uh, they would just sort of like hide in the woods because we live but in, in the <laughs> woods. So this wasn't actually <laughs> – that, that's this is actually true. I can actually say that. I come up because I I had to go to work super early. It's like, okay, what do you what do you care if I see you? I don't give a shit. 
go in. I don't even know who you are until I realized yep. they all work for him. But that's another story. Yeah, that, that's a story we won't be repeating here about the Thai boys. Well, we'll be repeating. We already said it. <laughs> Shush. Anyway, hey, he so I one. think we uh, we veered way off topic, and I think we did a good job with mm-hmm. this uh, subject matter, considering we know nothing about it in terms of being able to relate to it. But, and, but uh, it's storytelling, yeah. and that's Convoy. what the whole point was. He taught us. Convoy. Convoy, yes. Oh, you got a piece of shit on your hands, let me tell you. Is it is it worse than having my baby? No. <laughs> okay, then I'm good. <laughs> All right, awesome. Talk to you next See week. See you next week, Kirk. All right, bye. Yes, we've got Convoy next week. Thank you all so much for listening. Stay safe, everyone, and look for a lot more content from us at notinhalloffame.com.